Uh, hello, everybody. So I am uh, Anat Wed, and I work with the Institute for the Preservation of Medical Traditions in uh, Washington, D.C. And I wish to uh, congratulate the Academia for the organization of this conference and also to thank the organizer for the invitation to participate. I wanted to see a little bit how, in ancient times, physicians transformed medicinal plants into pharmaceuticals. And we know about the uh, Hippocratics and the uh, uh, personalized uh, treatments, but uh, what I wanted to do is focusing more on the pharmaceutical techniques and uh, trying to understand if we can see a moment where we shifted in ancient medicine from the Hippocratic medicine and uh, drug making to something which is more pharmaceutical technique. And I'll uh, focus on the first century uh, AD and uh, Dioscorides. And so uh, logically, we should think that there is archaeological material that uh, would make it possible to see uh, traces of ancient uh, medicine here. We have a container from a shipwreck dating back to 140, 120 before uh, Christ. And here we have the uh, medicine themselves. But they don't tell us much about the way medicines were made. And in any case, there are extremely rare pieces. There are also some boxes of physicians, like uh, this one here, which contain uh, remains of ancient medicines. But again, that doesn't tell us much about the way the medicines were made at the most. They tell us what the medicines themselves were. And there are also the famous uh, cholera. And we see here the seal to print the name of the uh, physician on the uh, cholerium uh, itself. But once again, it doesn't tell us much, very much about the uh, way of making medicine. And so what I'll do is returning to the text of uh, Dioscorides, and I'll start with two words about Dioscorides. Those of you who have already followed my presentation at the uh, Academia know about Dioscorides, but I wish to briefly uh, summarize what uh, we know about Dioscorides. So he was born in uh, Anazarba in ancient Greek, Anavarza now, first century uh, AD. His full name in the literature is Pedanio Dioscorido Anazarbeos, and he wrote the Periilis Iatricis de Materia Medica uh, in five books. And in his introduction, he said himself that he uh, walked uh, quite a mile to discover the medicine and uh, it is believed to have been a military physician on the basis of the phrase that uh, we see here, but this might not be the case. Just for the information, here is where Anavarza is located. So uh, South East Turkey, almost uh, in uh, Syria, close to uh, Antakya. And this is what uh, Anavarza looks like now an archaeological site which hasn't been excavated and which should be excavated because it's uh, really interesting. For the information, Dioscorides is most known by the uh, manuscript which is in Vienna, the uh, National Library, dated to almost uh, 512, but it's not totally the case, but that's not the moment to discuss that. But there are many more manuscripts, and here we see a collage uh, of several of these manuscripts, which are uh, very different one from the other, and they give us a very different view of the text than the manuscript of Vienna. So that's the material with which I'll uh, be working, and how will I do that? Well, I'll use the uh, standard edition of Dioscorides Greek text by uh, Max Fellman, German uh, philologist, published in three volumes between 906, 1906 and 1914. And what I have done, I have digitized the full text of Dioscorides and I have made the word index. So we see here a, a fragment of this uh, word index. And as you can see, I have chosen this page intentionally because on the upper right, you see Trochiscus, uh, Trochisk. And what you see, for example, for Trochiscus, the first reference is 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8,
and then between parentheses 1 13 15 what does that mean 1.8 means first book chapter 8 and then between parentheses we have one first volume 13 page 13 15 line 15 uh, so we can always find any reference immediately by reference to the edition of uh, Velma. So now that we know how I work on that, here is uh, what I think, what we would expect to do. And we take such a word as colurion or colirion. And you'll see here, we have uh, all the attestations that we can find in Dioscurity thanks to my uh, word index. And as you can see, they are not that uh, numerous, there are not that many, which is a little bit surprising. And in any case, even though there were uh, many more, we have a problem of interpretation because uh, collyrium has traditionally been considered to be, and we see here again the one I have already shown, uh, traditionally considered to be a medicine for ophthalmology. But when I take the text of Dioscurides, and we have here some fragments, you see that this is not necessarily the case. In the first attestation, 4.68, it is an analgesic. In the second, it is for the treatment of fistules. And then in the last group of attestations, this is a uh, medicine for abortions. So nothing to do with ophthalmology. And so we have to revise a certain number of notions and concepts. And trochiscos, for example, we don't have that many. So what we thought might have been an easy uh, solution, checking the names of the medicine and then trying to find explanation about how they were made, doesn't work. So we need to return to the text. But if we do that, we have, again, a certain number of problems. And so I have taken here, for example, paragraph uh, 99 in book one about roses. We will not read it together. Uh, I'll just focus on some points. And so you'll see, for example, in the English translation at the end of the uh, first line, cutting off with sheer the so-called onyx. This is the white part on the petal, and then you must squeeze, etc. If we look carefully at this text, and so I reproduce it again here, we see that we have four textual problems. The first one is the explanation. Operesti to lefko to entofilo. So the fact the uh, onyx is the central part of the flower, the, the petal, everybody knows that. So I believe that this is an addition. And then we have the words exlibin ke trivin. Again, this is redundant. This is an explanation, something which has been added by uh, a copist at some point in time. And then we have this uh, problem with enskia or enthi, in the shade or in a mortar. What does that mean? There is an hesitation here in the text. And finally, we have one manuscript, the manuscript R, which is a manuscript in uh, Spain, which has a, a very a simpler text, actually been enskia, Acris U. And this manuscript, uh, the analysis showed that this manuscript has a form of the text which is much more ancient. So we'll shoot this version. What I mean here is that we have textual problems. We shouldn't take the uh, standard edition at face value and we need to analyze it very uh, uh, carefully. And so the text that we'll take is much simpler, much shorter. Here we have a similar problem, and I will not uh, detail that uh, up to the very last uh, element, about to uh, indicon lycion. And so here I take the text again and I see what the problems are. This comes at the end of a chapter, and you'll see that there are the two words legate que historita. So this is something that Dioscorides has heard of. And we have an expression here, catharsis yinecon, while normally Dioscorides use emina. And finally, we have uh, mistra, uh, which is a uh, measure for the quantity. This is the only word, only attestation of that term in Dioscorides. So I believe that this paragraph is an addition and does not, uh, is not part of the text of Dioscorides. We eliminate it. 
And we have the same here with the plant uh, Vitex agnuscastus. We have here an explanation of its name, Onomaster, etc. So once again, this is a gloss which has been introduced into the text and we eliminate. What I mean here is that we have to be very careful when we take the text of Dioscorides and we have to be sure that we work on the core of the text, what is original if this can be uh, found. Once we have done that, we've cleaned in a certain way the text, uh, we read and we have the impression that there might be a template. So here I have underlined all the terms which refer to pharmacological, pharmaceutical technique. And so you'll see that we have every single time the way of preparing the medicine. But for example, uh, the very uh, last but one, Sinelevoro Lefko Diplazioni Camelite. So we have an explanation. The drug goes with something else, Elevoros in this case, and the quantity and also an excipient mainly. But this impression might not be confirmed by the text because when we continue our reading, we see that there is a lot of very different expressions. And so here I have taken just from the uh, first 10 chapters of the, part of the text in the book one, the uh, manipulations, the pharmaceutical technique. And you can see that this is very different. Even though, for example, one six, we have phenomenon met idatos or met oinu, uh, inu, the phenomenon, but we have lots of different uh, manipulations and uh, techniques. So the first impression that we had of a possible template disappears. Continuing our reading, we immediately discovered that there are also very specific applications. So for example, here uh, in 1.22, we have a powder to uh, perfume the whole body. The second one is a medicine against the uh, hangover. The third one is an anticonceptional. The fourth is uh, a cream that uh, you put on the entire body to av avoid uh, stings and bites by a venomous uh, animal. And the next one, for example, 184, is the bark of a tree, elm actually, which is used as a bandage. So as you can see, we have very different things. And in the last one, 104, we have the shell of a pomegranate, which is used as a recipient to instill uh, a liquid in the ear. In spite of this great diversity, we might also have some uh, medicine, some elements, some components which return quite regularly. And so one of them is a kiroti. And I've taken here all the indications the, uh, of the, uh, that medicine which, which serve as an excipient for the uh, other components of uh, compound uh, remedy. And so you'll see here that we have something like uh, 12 uh, occurrences of kiroti to make a uh, medicine. So here we have something which is quite uh, specific in terms of uh, medical pharmaceutical technique. We have also explanations about how to make um, long-term uh, preservation uh, medicine. So you see here uh, four examples which I've taken. And so the term to mean, to refer to a long-term preservation medicine is apothecine, which we have in all these uh, passages. And we have the explanation on how to prepare these medicines so that they can be, they can be uh, conserved uh, long-term. But we have also explanations about adulterations. And so here again, I have taken some uh, examples. And interestingly enough, we have them about the exotic drugs. And so you see uh, dolute, dolidacy, etc. We have it uh, every, uh, in every passage. But we have also diagnosis, the way to uh, find these uh, adulteration and uh, how to make the uh, right uh, diagnosis with with the signs of the adulterated drug 
and the real one. And we have also something interesting, but you know, strangely enough, I have found only one case in the first book about substitution here. We have in 113 a notation in the chapter about Cassia. Uh, if you don't have a kinamomon, uh, Cassia can make the same. So while we were thinking that we could find uh, very specific indications on the preparations, in a certain sense, the uh, hopes are disappointed. And uh, in conclusion, what we have here is a topic which hasn't been much research, which seems to be more complicated than it uh, seemed when we approached it at first glance. And I believe that we need to return to the text here the full text of Dioscorides and the instrument which I have created, which is the uh, World Index, which provides us the key to find all the attestation of all the terms which might be significant. And what I am saying is that we have here a problem, a topic, and the means, but we still need to do the research and I would be very happy if we can do this research in collaboration uh, with the uh, Academy. So many thanks for your uh, attention and hope to see you again in Athens as soon as the uh, pandemic will uh, make it possible. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.